the solution for this example, the first thing we need to get is what is the pre-tax effective interest rate? So here's the effective interest rate we want. Here's the tax rate. What we need to know is what is the pre-tax effective rate? So it's equals to whatever our required return is divided by 1 minus our tax rate. So it's telling us 22.22%. Let's just check. Take the pre-tax rate and multiply it by 1 minus our tax rate. Should get to 16%, exactly 16%. So that's what we need pre-tax. This is an effective interest rate. Because we're going to build a bucket, we have to make it a nominal interest rate. It's compounded monthly. So I'm going to go and find the function called nominal. I'm going to say that's the effective rate to be paid over 12 periods. Say OK. So the interest rate we're going to use is 20.24%. The bucket is partially built for us, so you'll see it's been set up. That's how much we're borrowing. So the required return or the interest rate that the bank requires is going to be this 20%. So the formula we're going to use here is going to be equals to, I'll just use brackets, the opening balance plus any drawdowns, multiplied by a nominal interest rate, just put the dollar signs on, divide by 12, and I can copy this across. So if there weren't any payments, those are what the return should be. But we have received some payments, I'm just going to link to here, and copy it across. So what you'll see is that these repayments drop the closing balance a bit, which then affects the re required return. And what you can see is at the end of the 12 months, there's 108,000 outstanding. So in order to achieve this return, this last payment effectively needs to be minus whatever we owe at that point. So it's that plus that plus that, close it, so there's the repayment. We now want to just check that this is correct, that when we use it, it comes to the correct IRR. So we've got to check cash flows. Now, the only thing you need to be careful of here is you cannot go, so what we need here is we need to show equals minus whatever's in there plus whatever's in there. So that part is fairly easy. So the cash flows, we have to make the payments to the bank. It looks like that. You may be tempted to also include this drawdown as a cash flow. But keep in mind that this cash flow, the way IRR and NPV works, this assumes the end of periods and IRR needs a, a calculation to start with. So we're actually going to get rid of that. In order to get it work out, we need to tell it that this one is equals to minus the drawdown. So what we've now got is cash flows that we get a hundred thousand out and then nothing we get we pay back two five, nothing two five, etc. And eventually we have to pay the hundred and eight thousand. You'll see the IRR is correct. But just be careful, if you did a straight IRR, we look at these values, you'll see it effectively gives you 1.69%. Remember that's 1.69% per period. This is monthly. So we have to make it effective. And the way we do that go 1 plus whatever that cell is to the power of 12 and we subtract the 1 and it then gives us a 22.22 percent 22.22 percent 
if you don't want to remember the mathematical formula, we can do it this way as well. We do the IRR, get the number. That's nominal per month. To make it nominal per year, we can multiply it by 12. So there's 20.24, it should be familiar to you, it's that cell there. We still need to make it effective, so instead of doing the 1 plus calculation, we use the effect formula. That's all my nominal rate, comma, number of periods, close the bracket, and it gets me to 22.22%. We highly recommend that when you do calculations like this, build in the checks. It's very easy to make a mistake, to forget your nominal or effective, so building in the check will make sure that your calculation actually works.